recording or I? Yep, it just started. Okay. Um, why don't you start by telling me a bit about, um, yeah, how you discovered uh, cosmic human design? Well, I um, had gone down to Costa Rica uh, for a combination, um, like two week retreat, which combined or com well, they, they they do it like every seven years. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think we were the second or third time. I can't remember. But anyway, it was this therapy um, called uh, biodynamic breath trauma release um developed by this ukrainian guy named Giten Tonkov, i think his last name is and um so they we did basically every other day with doing breath work and movement with ayahuasca oh cool and one of the participants you know when you know just in the conversation we had during our break time was like I think you'd really dig human design. And I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. Like, that sounds amazing. I'm like, how come I've never heard of that before? That's kind of bizarre. Like, I'm is I, I'm all over the internet, man. Like, ever yeah. since it began, before it began. <laughs> um, so I got really excited about it. I bought a few books about it. I thought I'd maybe become a practitioner and do readings for people. But in the end... um I'm just kind of a, a scatterbrained and I finally decided that the only way I'm actually going to move forward towards being a professional consultant um, is to get a, a degree and a, uh, you know, ma master level and get license. And so I'm pursuing psychology. Um, cool. I'm not sure if I'll stop at master's or go on to PhD or, or PsyD, but right awesome man um well i i hope that um that i can help uh you know answer any questions you may have now um yeah so um are you, so just just really briefly um the difference between this and the standard human design is is just that i'm using the true sidereal astrology you know that's the main mm. difference there um which in my opinion, uh, you know, everything in the chart comes from the astrology, um, you know, the positions of the planets. That determines everything we're looking at here. Um, and so in my opinion, true sidereal astrology is actually the only accurate astrology that there is. Um, because, um, for example, in the, in the standard tropical astrology, you know, um, if you say, uh, for example, Mars is in uh, Sagittarius. I could stop you here for a sec. Go ahead. Yeah. I, uh, I'm not sure how long it's been, a year or maybe a little bit longer. I, I came across, I mean, I, I know, I'd known about Vedic, but I didn't really like know it was sidereal versus trop. You know, I didn't. Right. That didn't really, I just was like, oh, it's a different system. I didn't really know the the ins and outs but about a year ago i came across ophiuchus mm, yeah. and came up in the youtube algorithm i think and i was like what so then i started searching for ophiuchus and came across true sidereal and i signed up for a, a master uh astrology course with this guy ike rodriguez yeah uh, and so i've done maybe two of the modules i think it's like a six module course <laughs> you know and i bought it like six months ago and i'm like well maybe when i finish the spring semester like i'm gonna get this done and i'll be a you know i'll be a certified astrologer and in, in true sidereal 13 sign true sidereal um so anyway i'd come and so, par, part of that process i came across your work and watched a little bit but didn't really dive too deep but Great. Okay, uh, so you, you're familiar. I looped, with I looped around and was like, "Yeah, I want to get a reading with Richard." Like, <laughs> Great. Uh, well, I'm honored that you are are here. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you're familiar with the, the astrology differences there. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, we we come to the chart here, and um, 
You know, I see you have the 45 in your design sun, and I always like to, you know, pay, pay a special emphasis to that because I have the 45 sun myself in the personality side of things. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can maybe give you a bit more deeper insight than, uh, you know, is, is typical because I have this one as well. Nice. Um, now, um, and you've also got the 64 and the 63. Um, the cross of dominion. <laughs> Whenever I see a cross of dominion, you know, that person is going to have a big impact on things, um, you know, one way or another. Um, because, um, you know, not only the cross of dominion, what does that mean? Well, it, it, um, it all centers around this concept of the 45, which is um, the archetypal, um, uh, you know, king or or ruler you know the person that people uh come to uh, it's called gathering together or uh, you know bringing together and it's just this um kind of central kind of energy uh around the 45 um so everything anyone's cross that has the 45 in it is going to have a theme uh you know related to rulership dominion all these different things, and that's not in a bad way, you know, but, um, you know, just saying that you're going to be able to have some kind of impact, um, you know, on people because you have this 45. And now what the cross of dominion, and yeah, I'm skipping ahead a little bit here. I just wanted to mention this real quick. Um, the cross of dominion um, brings in the 64 and 63 the last two hexagrams of the I Ching. Now, the I Ching is kind of the basis for all of this. Uh, you know, all these different numbers are the hexagrams of the I Ching. And basically what those represent are the cosmic principles of harmony. Um, you know, um, I use this uh, kind of newer version of the I Ching called the Oracle of the Cosmic Way. Um, which kind of just rewrites everything we know about the I Ching um, and puts it into its proper uh, actual cosmic meaning. Now, um, in that book, it describes the process of freeing the true self from the ego's domination, which um, the way to think of the ego is this kind of false self, programmed self, that has developed through uh, humans' false use of language. You know, language is the cosmic gift that has been given to humans, you know. It's what really makes us unique. Um, and along with that, the ability to use the mind, you know. Well, um, <laughs> it just so happens that everyone's minds have kind of gone crazy in the world that we're living in now. Um, and the mind has come to think of itself as the ruler, as the... Um, as the only thing that really matters in the personality. And that is the ego, basically this um, mind um, uh, centeredness um, and a lot more to it than that. But um, anyways, the 64 and 63 being the last two hexagrams describe the completion, um, the before completion and the after completion of this process of freeing the true self. Um, which I believe is represented by this cosmic human design chart in that we can see what your true self is. We can see the different types of consciousness that you were born with and that in some way it's your destiny to develop or uh, fulfill because they're what make you unique. Um, and that's really everyone's goal in life is to develop their own uniqueness, you know, um, or at least cosmically speaking. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, um, I see you've got a lot of definition. Uh, you know, you've got seven out of the nine centers defined, um, which is a lot. Um, you know, if a center is is colored, it means it's defined. If it's if it's white, it means it's undefined. Basically. It means you're putting out that energy. That energy is coming from you, um, you know, in the defined center. So you have a lot of presence. You have a lot of potential presence and power with all this definition, a lot of energy. And indeed, we see you have three 
of the motor centers defined. You know, you've got the heart, the sacral, and the root center. Um, the other energy center is the, is the solar plexus, which you don't have any definition there, um, which probably makes you quite empathic to people, you know, being able to pick up on their feelings and stuff like that. Um, so you've got a lot, a ton of energy, a ton of energy. And uh, consistent with that, uh, we see your type is the manifesting generator. So the manifesting generator is the most energetic type. Um, you know, basically a combination of these other two types, the manifester and the generator. Um, because you have this defined sacral that is going to the throat. So um, you're able to manifest efficiently uh, something um, that you've responded positively to. You know, once you get that sacral response, which will feel like this gut yes feeling, then it's like everything starts going for you. But if that's not there, if if you if your sacral is not liking that, <laughs> then you're gonna feel kind of uh, apathetic. You know, you're gonna feel like, you know, how do I even do this? You know, where is the energy? You know, um, that kind of thing. Um, I'm a manifesting generator myself, by the way. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's like once the energy gets going and you really start feeling the energy and you get into it, then it's like, you know, everything is just clicking, 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 and, and you're going at this fast, efficient pace. You know, maybe you're even skipping steps. You know, you're maybe you're even skipping a lot um, because you feel so in tune with the energy. Um, and which ultimately leads to the sense of satisfaction. You know, all generators are here to experience that sense of satisfaction which comes from loving what you are doing, um, you know, comes from, you know, working, doing something that you actually like and love and care about, and uh, basically using that uh, sacral energy wisely, you know, that life energy. The sacral is the, the source of the life energy, um, the reproductive energy, the generative energy. Um, and so once it gets going, you know, it's, it's a real powerhouse of, of energy. Um, and so the type, yeah, knowing your type can give you this general kind of guide, these kind of general guidelines for, um, you know, very, very general, not very specific about how, how you should in general tend to operate, um, you know, for example, uh, the kind of the opposite of the manifesting generator would be the reflector who has no definition. So obviously their kind of lifestyle is going to be or should be uh, a lot different from yours. Um, right. Um, and you've also got the uh, sacral authority here. Now, the authority basically is just, um, you know, uh, telling you uh, what inner sense you can really rely on uh, all the time. In this case, it's the sacral as well. So the sacral response um, that um, that you hear probably hear a lot of people talk about the sacral response uh, in, in the human design world. Um, you know, well, most people really have kind of lost touch with this sacral response, which is really something that is in the body, you know? Um, and of course, the ego has, is going to lose complete touch with that because the ego is all in the mind. <laughs> um, so, yeah, feeling this sacral energy uh, in your body and trusting that, you know, trusting that, um, that gut instinct about what is correct for you to do rather than um, proceeding from some idea from something that has been put in your mind. You know, that's the thing about the things in our minds, you know, can we, um, do we really know if that, those thoughts were placed there uh, by something outside of us, you know, in which case following it uh, would not be being true to our, to our inner truth, you know, our, our true self. 
Um, and the true self basically is when all of you, all the different parts of your being are working in harmony. Um, that's the true self. And, and everything is in harmony. And um, you feel uh, very confident in what you're here to do. And um, you know, there's no confusion or anything. Um, so, so yeah, um, the type uh, authority. And yeah, feel free to ask any questions if you have them as we go along here. Um, the profile. So you've got the 6-2 profile. Um, <laughs> I really love the 6-2. It's, uh, it's like this uh, wise man, you know, the sage on the mountain, you know, um, the trusted advisor, um, you know, the, the person that, you know, people feel comfortable coming to. I mean, this would make you a great human design reader. You know, you've got that personality. Um, where you know people just trust you kind of intuitively to tell them what is the truth about something um and they'll believe it they'll really believe it e you know um everyone who comes to you they're going to trust your uh opinion um above uh, you know anything else pretty much um that's the power of being six two um, and it comes from this sixth line, which goes kind of goes through this uh, complex life process. Um, you know, the sixth line, uh, we can think of the lines as a house, you know, and uh, the first line would be the foundation. The sixth line would be the roof. So you're sitting on top of the roof of the house and you can see pretty much everything. But um you may not have always been on the roof. You know, the sixth line, it goes through this process where the first 30 years of your life or so, it's more like a third line. You're living more like a third line where you're uh, doing a lot of trial and error, experimentation. And it's probably, a lot of it's probably didn't work out or, or never was going to work out. Um, and so that, but that time is nevertheless valuable, was valuable to you in that it, it, it taught you um, what doesn't work. And so now you know for certain, you know, what doesn't work, what isn't you, um, and, and you're confident with that. Um, yeah, then, I just yeah. just went through my uh, second Saturn return earlier this year. So I feel like, you know, I'm finally ready. And I'm like, <laughs> shit, <laughs> am I? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, and then 30 to 50, you know, is, is you go, you go back up on the roof and do some reflection and then around after 50 or so, or after, you know, your second um, Saturn return, certainly um, you come, you finally are ready to come back down off of the roof and really embody this role model potential in you that was always there. Um it just needed time to develop. That's the most important thing for the sixth line is that you give yourself time. You know, you need lots of time to develop um, naturally, um, which is something that, you know, may make, may, um, you know, cause many sixth lines to feel out of place in the world today because it's all like you have to know, you have to know exactly what you want to do. You know, you have to be, you have to do this and this, but you know, really the sixth line is it's completely natural to not have a clue about any of that until you know that last stage, the last stage of your life. Um, so yeah, very common for six lines to totally change professions, careers, just completely, you know, or completely just start new, start fresh. Um yeah, <laughs> I certainly, I certainly. Uh, support the, uh, you know, being a human design reader. <laughs> um, now, let's talk about the second line for a moment. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, these lines, they come from your personality sun and design sun. Uh, you know, you see you have the 64.6. 
and then we have the 45.2. So that's where that comes from. Um, and why these are so, why the profile is, is a thing, because it's describing the lines of your sons, um, which, um, you know, make up really the bulk, the big, uh, you know, points of your personality. It's the sun is the, you know, most influential of, of the planets. Um, so well, unconscious. Yeah, go ahead. That, that makes me think about uh, something that, that has been kind of floating around my brain ever since I had my first, like, ex expensive. <laughs> I've done some cheaper, you know, astrology charts over the years, but yeah. uh, back in 2000, 10 ish i got like a 500 hundred dollar destiny reading by a tropical uh -huh. astrologer uh -huh. and he was like wow like you got a lot of uh magnetism going on you, you just you belong on stage and like your destiny is you know he believes is in the uh the nodal axis mm -hmm. and so my north node uh is in Gemini, self node in Sagittarius. He's like, that's the messenger of the God archetype. <laughs> well, that resonates. Um, and then when I found true sidereal and the Ophiuchus, the 13 sign true sidereal, I was kind of like, you know what? I think the moon is really the most powerful thing in our astrology chart because mm. my moon's in Ophiuchus and my rising is also in Ophiuchus. So it's like, damn. Like that's the center of the galaxy. Like I'm here to like bring the cosmic wisdom to the world. And I was just like, <laughs> so is the sun like what? What? What is basic? My question is, what's the role of the moon and in, in HD as you have come um, to understand it? Yeah, the moon, the moon. It's like you said. It's like this magnetic force that is pulling. That is um, that you're always attracted towards. It's the driving force. It's the driving force. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, it's 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 going to be what's always on your mind. It's going to be what you're always seeking. Uh, you know, consciously or subconsciously. It's your also your attractor field. In the unconscious, it's the attractor field, so it's it's just there, you know. It's and it's attracting, um, and the and the conscious moon is more of what you, what your consciousness is attracted towards, or or what is attracting your consciousness. Um, and the forty four, that's uh, yeah, that's um, that's coming to meet, coming to meet. So you're coming to meet something, some kind of wisdom. You know, it's the sixth line too. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I do believe that it is is in Ophiuchus. Um, yeah, now that you mention it. Um, and the sun, the sun is like your life's work. Um, you know, because the sun is uh, what is radiating out from you. Uh, that can't be suppressed, really. And so inevitably, one way or another, you're going to wind up doing something on a daily basis that involves your personality sun, because to do otherwise would be to go insane in a way. <laughs> um, so yeah, the sun is just this, it's this powerful radi radiating force uh, that is, you know, shining from you. Um, and wow, yeah, it's the 64.6, really. So not only the last hexagram, the last line in the Holy Ching, <laughs> 64.6. So yeah, absolutely. So you're at the very end, at the very end of the whole process, really. This, this process, in my opinion, of freeing the true self. That's what we're really doing here. Um, and uh, which is in communion with God, really. That's what the true self means, to be in communion with God all the time, all the time, um, which is something that has been denied us um, really by this, all the ego stuff, all the spells <laughs> and um, 
you know, and that we need to break through that, you know, because all of our true selves have kind of been covered up by all of this programming, this false programming. Um, and you see how much they want to get rid of even the idea or concept of God, you know, in the popular consciousness. Um, because, because intuitively we know that when we do attain God consciousness, which is something that is meant for every man, you know, everyone. Um, instead, we've had we've had people who have tried to keep that all to themselves, really, in my opinion. Um, but they failed miserably at it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so the six two, yeah. You so these profiles, you know, they kind of operate as a progression as well. And the six two, it's um, it's the second to last of the profiles as well. So, yeah, you're at the very end of this whole archetypal journey, really. Um, so, so what are the next two in the sequence? Um, the six three, the six three is the last. Um, so yeah, that, okay. that's the last. So it's six two, and then the six three. Um, finally, um, now the six three. Um, yeah. So the the difference between those is that I would say the six two is more of a teacher, more of a guide, and the six three is more of an experiencer. You know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, themselves. Um, who who isn't focused on teaching or or doing any of that stuff they're just they're just in the process all the time you know um now for you this six two um makes you the the archetypal uh teacher you know um uh because of this second line combined with the sixth um so the second line uh i was going to talk about that the second line is the line of the natural you know, the projected energy. It's just projecting the energy. It's just radiating the energy um, without any kind of filter or anything, really. And that's why it's called the natural, because everything just kind of comes out naturally. Or at least ideally, that's the way you're comfortable with. And, and why it's called the hermit, because you operate best when you have this kind of space you can retreat to where you can really just be yourself without any projections, without any people's opinions, you know, just totally free is how the second line likes to operate. So it's good that you have this, uh, you know, space all to yourself, really. Um, uh, you know, and that's, that's where the second line, that's where the that's where the hermit name comes from. It doesn't mean that you are is, are meant to be an actual hermit and seclude yourself away. No, it just means that, you know, you're most comfortable when you can operate free of constraints, um, of other people's constraints, um, if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's reminding me of uh, something that I've, known about myself that i tend to be very hermit like and i tend to be in even if i'm out in social situations like i try to be invisible i try to <laughs> operate like as a trickster behind the scenes type of a thing it's so funny you say that because that's the uh the highest frequency of the 26 is invisibility um sorry that i don't know why it does that um we're not we're not almost out of time though. um the 26, this, the, have you heard the Gene Keys, the Gene Keys, by the way? Yeah, I actually just watched an interview with, uh, with Mr. Rudd the mm -hmm. other day. And I was like, man, I really love this stuff. Like, um, I'm gonna have to dive into that at some point. And I, I, uh, I don't know, did I actually buy his two books yet or not? I think I did, but I might have. So, yeah, I view them as being completely integrated into human design. Um, and so let me just briefly say that the main thing about the Gene Keys is we have three different frequencies, three different words to describe the same energy, basically, for each of the hexagrams. So the 26, you know, there's a shadow, which is the shadow frequency, the ego frequency. Then there's a gift frequency, which is um, 
you know, kind of in between. And then we have the highest, the city, uh, you know, the pure frequency. Um, and so there's kind of these three different words we can use to get a better idea of what the energy is really talking about. For example, the 26, like I said, the city highest frequency is invisibility, <laughs> invisibility, because the 26 is called the taming power of the great. So it's, it's about this, um, yeah, this power um, of the great um, power of God really is what it's talking about. Um, and in the gift frequency, we have artfulness artfulness you know it's all about skill uh, the 26 it's all about being the best being the best being the most skilled at something um which it turns out at the highest frequency is actually to be invisible you know there's this saying that the master potter leaves no trace you know <laughs> of himself he's invisible um and just like god does his work in the world as well it's invisible you know um, so that's the highest frequency of the 26. Um, and it's also called the, the trickster as well, <laughs> the, the sacred trickster. Uh, so that's funny. Yeah, he um, was, he was interviewed by this guy, um, Robert Edward, drawing a blank on his last name, but he's like huge into mathematics and He's teamed up with uh, Nassim Haramein and um, this guy, what is that first name? His last name is Green, and he's gone into the Shakespeare, you know, decoding the sonnets, and it's just oh. like, like on the cover of the sonnets, there's the lo lo location of the Great Pyramid, like built into the it's just mind blowing. Like, oh wow. <laughs> um, That's anyway, like this, something I'd like to yeah uh, robert edward grant interviewed is it it's richard rudd yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so you share this i was like is it i was like well i'm talking to richard is it richard <laughs> rudd too? or am i just making that shit up <laughs> yeah that that conversation was just like oh wow oh, awesome. I'll, I'll, definitely I'll check that out yeah <laughs> okay so um yeah, let's go ahead and, and read your incarnation cross here. So the incarnation cross, it's called a cross because it comes from your personality, sun and earth, and your design, sun and earth, which form a cross in the zodiac. Um, you know, because the earth is opposite the sun, so we've got two lines, and um, you know, the design and the personality are approximately ninety days or ninety degrees apart from each other um, because the sun travels about one degree a day around the zodiac. Yeah. Um, the left angle, and so the left angle means um, that uh, the name, the left name comes from the fact that your profile is one of the upper lines of the upper trigram, you know, we've got the lower trigram, one through three, the upper trigram, four through six. And, you know, everything in the upper trigram tends to be focused on the other, on, on the other side, you know, getting to the other side, um, getting to the next hexagram in the sequence, or, you know, communicating something learned from that hexagram. Whereas the first three, the lower trigram, are about that internal experimentation process of, of researching and, you know, it's like the it's like the right angle is the research and development, the left angle is the publicity, you know, the um, you know, getting it out there, getting it out there. Um, or more transpersonal. So left angle cross of dominion. The left angle means it's transpersonal. So your destiny, your life is going to be focused on this kind of distributing, uh, kind of getting this, getting some kind of knowledge out to people um, rather than researching and developing it all yourself, for example. Um, 
So uh, people whose interpretation of the past can be impactful using information to assume, to assume positions of power or authority. Um, and we can kind of uh, see here what this is all about uh, if we look at you know, these four gates, the 64, 63, 45, and 26. Um, and because we're dealing with your sun and earth, um, you know, all four of them, <laughs> uh, this is going to give you a good idea about your, your life's purpose. Uh, you know, how could it not when we have, when we're considering the two sons, you know? Um, so yeah, this can give you a good idea about your general life purpose. Um, so, okay, let's see. Interpretation of the past can be impactful. Interpreting the past. Okay, this is something that is going on with the 64 and 63. Um, what do they mean? Uh, well, the 64 is before completion. So before completion, which is the state that everyone is in now, um, before um, we fr have freed the true self, we have to deal with a lot of issues. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of uh, confusion. That's the shadow of the 64, confusion. Um, and the city is illumination. Um, so this is all about making sense of the past in a way, making sense of how we got here to this point and where do we need to go now? That's the 63, the other side of it, the after completion. So what will it take for our success to really endure? You know, what are the key points? You know, we need to make sure we're understanding uh, in this process. And, and how does that relate to what we see in front of us now, you know, the 64? So there's this kind of, um, yeah, interpreting for others um, what everything means and putting it into the right context and, and the right category and all of these things. Um, and it says interpretation of the past can be impactful using information, so all that stuff, to assume positions of power or authority. Now, that's a, kind of an egocentric way of saying it, but, um, you know, it, it means that by interpreting this knowledge for people, you're going to be in some kind of authority. Uh, you're going to be some kind of authority or at least have that potential. Uh, and people are going to respect your interpretation. Um, so this can give you a great amount of power, really, um, because if you're the only one with the right interpretation of events, you know, then um, if you can solidify that, then you know that everyone's going to start coming to you because uh, if you're the only one with the right interpretation, you know, um, and and yeah, I guess some somehow you could uh, you know quote unquote exploit that and you know just kind of make a lot of money for yourself. That would be the ego side of it, but um, also is this is going to give you. Uh, the potential to to have have a, a great amount of of respect of um, you know truly <laughs> doing uh, the cosmic work <laughs> as it were um, you know and 